recently there was a congressional hearing held in U.S. about the organ harvesting in China. They heard the organ harvesting testimonies by Falun Gong practitioners, political dissidents, and minority groups. Meanwhile, there have also been rumors saying the Chinese Communist Party took organs from the prisoners. Of the total organ transplants that took place in China in recent years, what percentage would you estimate that the organs came from Falun Gong practitioners? Well, in, in, in this book, State Organs, uh, there, I do have a chapter uh, on uh, numbers, and Ethan Gutman has a chapter on numbers as well. And uh, it, it, dealing with numbers is difficult because, as I say, China is involved basically in cover-up. Uh, they don't publish death penalty statistics. They have four transplant registries, the, uh, one of them is in Hong Kong, and in each of these transplant registries, I think one's for kidney, one for heart, one for lung, uh, uh, and one for liver. The liver in Hong Kong. The liver in Hong Kong used to be public uh, and then we and others started quoting it so they shut it down uh, on the basis that they didn't like the analysis they were, we were making uh, from their figures. Uh, and uh, since then, uh, Deputy Minister of Health and Wang Jiefu has given a speech based on some of these figures but the, the speech uses contradictory figures. Uh, so, uh, we, uh, with the death penalty, we've got Amnesty International reporting, uh, tabulating reported death penalty cases. Uh, what we could see is, is uh, at least in terms of government claims, they do make periodic assertions about volumes of transplants. And, and, and there's, they were saying when we started out it was 10,000 a year and then they were fiddling with the death penalty and the, and the volume went down and now it's, uh, 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 in terms of when I say fiddling with the death penalty, they, they transferred responsibility for imposition of the death penalty from regional courts to the Supreme Court and they cut down on the number of death penalty offenses. Uh, and so the death penalty volumes went down and it le led to a decrease in transplant volumes but then uh, the transplant volumes went back uh, to uh, traditional levels uh, even though um, the death penalty volumes are down and they started a deceased donor system but the uh, number of deceased donors is statistically insignificant and and of course a deceased donor is a gives a donation while alive, and then you have to wait till the person dies, so it's not actually a donation, it's a promise of a future donation. Uh, living donors, uh, there's been a scam, and they've been trying to shut it down, and they, and, and they acknowledge that uh, living donations are bad for the donor's health, so they've been trying to decrease that. Uh, the living donation law says only relatives and, and people have been faking uh, relative associations in order to sell organs. I mean, that would basically be only kidneys. Uh, so we're left with all these various strands of information and uh, my estimate based on that is that when we started out that out of the 10,000 a year transplants about 7,500 uh, came from Falun Gong and about 2,500 came from death penalty and others. Uh, Ethan Gutman has identified other sources, other prisoners of conscience, Uyghurs, uh, house Christians, uh, Tibetans all, also being sourced but no, obviously not in the same numbers because these uh, are, are smaller phenomena. And, and um, my estimation now, after the decrease in the death penalty, is that the actual Falun Gong sourcing has gone up to about uh, 8,500 out of the 10,000. So, so that's my estimate now. Throughout all these years, you have been participating activities around the world to expose the crimes of organ harvesting in China. In your opinion, which organizations should or could actively participating in this kind of efforts to stop the crimes? Oh, there's a number of different organizations that could be involved, in fact have been involved, uh, uh, could be helpful and in some cases have been helpful. Uh, there's the whole transplant professional community uh, and to a certain extent state organs is a, re a reflection of the interest of that community because many of the authors in that book are, are transplant professionals. Uh, Gabe Danovich, uh, Art Kaplan, uh, uh, Ghazali uh, uh, Ahmed uh, from uh, Malaysia and uh, Torsten Trey, he's not a transplant professional but he's a doctor, uh, uh, Maria Singh uh, from Australia, also a doctor. Uh, so uh, uh, it, it, there is the, I would say, the transplant community and, and, the, and there is an international association of transplant professionals called the, trans, the Transplantation uh, Society which has been uh, 
active, not only in setting ethical standards generally, but dealing specifically with the phenomenon of China and the sourcing of organs from prisoners. We've been also dealing with the World Medical Association, which hasn't been as helpful, but they have been in some discussions with the Chinese Medical Association about uh, this issue. And of course, each of these international associations have national counterparts who, who could be useful and in some cases are. There's the whole uh, human rights community, uh, the various human rights non-governmental organizations. Uh, again, uh, some of them have been very helpful. Uh, the International Society for Human Rights, uh, headquartered in uh, Frankfurt, uh, their Swiss, Swiss branch has been very active in combating this issue and, uh, and, and conducted a campaign and, and gave David Kilgourney a, a prize and a platform. Uh, Human Rights Without Frontiers, uh, headquartered in Belgium, has also been very active in this issue. Uh, the, uh, and, and again, they've been trying to organize uh, advocacy to the European Union and g given us a platform also. Amnesty International in Switzerland was active on the particular issue of uh, clinical testing of pharmaceutical drugs in uh, China, of, uh, of anti-rejection drugs, where the sourcing of organs uh, for the anti-rejection drugs was prisoners. So. They've been helpful there, uh, although not more generally. There uh, is uh, the ethical community, the professional um, academic uh, ethics, uh, medical ethics community, which has been helpful. Uh, there was a conference organized in Houston which produced a book which focused in large uh, part around that issue. Uh, of course, parliamentarians and, uh, and civil servants who worked through their Civil servants work through their governments and parliamentarians work through their parliaments. And, but uh, again, we've seen uh, some responsiveness in, in, in these various parliamentary and governmental entities. So I would say there's definitely uh, uh, activity and buy-in on, on the issue. N not enough, obviously. I mean, the abuse hasn't stopped. In fact, it's accelerated. But uh, there's been changes. I mean, you mentioned the 2006 law, and there's been other changes since. So that there's been movement in the field, and, and, and my hope is eventually that movement will result in, in real positive reform. So, last question. Uh, this crime has been widely exposed, and many, many people in the world, all government, uh, know the truth of the life organ harvesting uh, in China. So, what will be the impact to the communist regime for today? Well, uh, I mean, my view, uh, I mean, the, communi the communist regime is not elected. Uh, it, it rules by force. It's, uh, it's an imposition on the people of China. It's, it's a Western imposition. I mean, communism is a Western import. Uh, and, and to a certain extent, that's uh, why uh, the communists are so afraid of uh, Falun Gong, because, uh, I mean, n not only is it moral uh, when the communist regime is immoral, it's also authentically Chinese. Uh, it's it's, it's a blending and updating of uh, ancient Chinese tradition, the exercise traditions and the spiritual traditions. And and, 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 uh, and, and of course, it is spiritual and the communist regime is atheist. Uh, and, and so this, uh, um, the, the communist regime feels that uh, the uh, Falun Gong is, is, is antithetical to everything they stand for and, and, and a real threat to them ideologically to their ideological supremacy because of its, its roots in, in, in the real China, so to speak. And uh, I mean, I, w I would uh, like to see a China that, that is democratic, that is free, that is diverse, uh, where people could be free to be Christians and Falun Gong. And, and uh, the, uh, I mean, my specific, uh, uh, role in all this is, is to try to end the killing of Falun Gong for their organs. I, I mean, I, I would say that the killing of Falun Gong for their organs uh, discredits mightily uh, the, the communist regime. But of course, I mean, Tiananmen Square discredited them very badly. Uh, and so my view is, and I think we should learn from Tiananmen Square, I, I mean, just establishing beyond doubt that the communist regime has done something horrible isn't enough by itself to remove the regime uh, because uh, they, they, it's not, uh, it, there's a lot of censorship that goes on. I, I mean, how was the re regime able to survive Tiananmen Square uh, when, it, it, as I say, it was broadcast publicly? Well, uh, I mean, it was a combination 
uh, a, a brute force in propaganda. I mean, this is Mao Zedong uh, you, 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 uh, ideology. You stay in power through the pen and the sword. Uh, the, uh, it's a combination of uh, and, and censorship and so on. And we see that with our report. And I mean, one of the things that's actually interesting now uh, is that our report and everything associated with it was banned from China until this dispute uh, about Bo Xilai and Wang Lishan. And, and, and once uh, there was an attempt to get Bo Xilai uh, out of the Standing Committee in the Communist Party uh, and Chongqing, all our stuff became public. And, and it's still public. You can still see it in China. Uh, and, and that tells me that this is part of the internal power struggle. Uh, that, uh, I mean, the reason it's there is it's an attempt to discredit Bo Xilai and his faction, Zhou Yang Kang and Zhang Zemin, who have been instrumental, the leaders in the, in the persecution in Falun Gong. And uh, so, uh, I mean, I don't know where this is all going to end, but it leads me to think that... Uh, you know, uh, that it may lead to some alleviation in the plight of Falun Gong because uh, the abuse of Falun Gong is being used against the abusers, I mean the lead abusers. Uh, and, and so without a complete change in the regime, I, I think there's some reason to hope that uh, there might be a, at least in the short term an alleviation in the plight of the Falun Gong in China. Thank you very much for okay. your great efforts and for this interview. Okay, thank thanks. Thanks again.